Let's go over the basic rules of soccer. As you probably already know, the point of the game is to get the ball into the goal at the end of the field. The players trying to score a goal are called offense, and the players trying to stop the other team from scoring are called defense. The goal that a team is trying to defend is their goal, so players try and score on the other team's goal. A soccer game is divided into two halves with a break in between them. The teams switch sides of the field for the second half. For instance, if the red team was defending the left goal and trying to score in the right goal during the first half of the game, they would turn around to defend the right goal and attempt to score in the left goal during the second half of the game. Soccer is played without using hands. Players may not touch the ball with their hands or arms, and they may not touch other players with their hands or arms. The only exception is the goalie who can touch the ball with his hands within the penalty box. When a goalie has the ball in his hands, the opposing team must move behind the build-out line. At the beginning of each half and after goals, play begins with a kickoff from the middle of the field. Before the kickoff, each team must stay on their own half of the field. The kicking team may have players inside the center circle, but the receiving team must stay outside. The referee will blow a whistle, and one player will kick the ball. The kick must go forward over the line, not backward, and the player who kicked the ball first may not kick it again until another player has touched it. After the first kick, players may enter the center circle and cross onto the opponent's side of the field. If the ball goes out of bounds on the long side of the field, the ball is taken away from the team that touched it last and given to the opposing team. One player from that team will step off the field, take the ball in his hands, and throw the ball back onto the field. The player must keep both feet on the ground during the throw and use both hands to throw the ball from behind his head. If the offense kicks the ball out of bounds on the short side of the field, the ball is returned to the field with a goal kick. The ball is placed within the smallest box near the goal, usually on the corner of the box. The offense must move behind the build-out line, and the goalie kicks the ball back onto the field. If the defense kicks the ball out of bounds on their own short side of the field, the ball is placed on the corner of the field, and the offense kicks it back into play. This is called a corner kick. Fouls and penalties are largely self-explanatory. When an infraction occurs, the referee will blow the whistle, play will stop, and the ref will give players instructions about what to do next. For minor fouls like handballs, the victimized team is given a free kick from the spot of the foul. Rough play is not tolerated. For dangerous behavior, the referee may give a player a warning with a yellow card or immediately remove a player from the game with a red card. Two yellow cards in one game have the same consequence as the red card. There is one more rule that players must follow when inside the build-out line near the other team's goal. The offense must stay farther from the goal than either the ball or the goalie and one other defender. Players who are nearer to the goal than this are considered offsides and may not receive passes, try to score, or otherwise engage in the game. Basically, players are not allowed to stand by the goal and wait for the ball. You'll learn specific skills and techniques in practice, but I want to talk about two fundamental principles of strategy here. Each player on the field is assigned a position, and each position has its own job to do. No two jobs are duplicated. It's important to fulfill your own responsibility and trust your teammates to do theirs. Consider this scenario. The blue defense takes the ball away from the red team's right striker. The left striker runs over to help, leaving his own side of the field. The whole left side of the field is now unguarded, and the blue defense is free to pass the ball over there and take it all the way across the field without opposition. Instead, the left striker should have come to the middle of the field and tried to contain the blue team's passing. He should trust his teammates on the right side of the field to stop the forward progress. In the best case scenario, his teammates could steal the ball back and pass it to him for an attempt at a goal. The other principle is that of opportunity. Some goals are scored through sheer athletic prowess, but most are the result of players taking advantage of opportunities they find on the field. It is difficult to score from far away and from the side of the goal. It's much easier to score from right in front of the goal. Therefore, we can minimize the number of opportunities the other team has to score simply by keeping the ball away from the front of our own goal. 
passing the ball to a player who is standing in front of his own goal might look like good teamwork at first, but it actually puts the ball in a position that helps the other team. The defense should always kick the ball to the side of the field and avoid giving the other team an opportunity to score. I hope this summary has helped you understand the basic flow and mechanics of soccer. For everything else, I'll see you at practice.